So good evening and welcome to another vlog. Today um, I've come out and I want to continue my series of doing photographs that you can achieve while we're uh, more restricted with travel under lockdown. So uh, what I'm doing, you can probably hear, I'm by the side of a road. So uh, what I'm going to be doing is doing light trails. Um, one of the things we're uh, quite famous for here in Milton Keynes is concrete cows and roundabouts. Now obviously concrete cows aren't going to be great subjects for long exposure light trails. So I've taken a five minute walk down to the road where I am hoping to record some, um, some nice light trails as they come round the roundabout and down the main road. So uh, I'm going to go get my stuff set up and then we will talk through the shot and the settings and then when we get home, we'll run through the editing that I will apply to the images. So, speak to you in a moment. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing is making sure we set our ISO nice and low. Uh, we want to try and extend out these trails to about somewhere between 2 and 10 seconds. Uh, really it's just a case of experimenting, so I'm going to start with ISO 100 and then take a look to see how long those light trails are extending in terms of the shutter speed. Uh, I'm going to be setting my camera to around f11, but again a little bit of flexibility depending on um, how long I really want those trails to extend for. The other thing worth pointing out is uh, because the camera is set up on a tripod we want to make sure that we turn off our image stabilization. So I'm going to go and do that now uh, because if you leave it switched on you can just get a little bit of drift on your image. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my white balance to a fixed value. So I've set my white balance to about 3500 Kelvin uh, I can change that when I get into Lightroom. So I'm going to, I can change that when I get into Lightroom. It's really just to make sure that I've got all my images with a consistent value. So I can, do, when I check them on the back of the screen, I know that uh, things are going to match up correctly. Okay, so I'm just focusing now, and then what I've done actually is I've zoomed in to 100%, and then I've picked an area that I want to focus on, which is the roundabout. So, and then I've done my autofocus. Now what I'm going to do is just switch that over to manual so that my focus stay, stays the same for all of the images. I almost forgot to mention shutter release. This is important because we want to make sure that we don't jiggle the camera around when we set off the shutter. So a shutter release is just a really good way to stop your camera moving around when you press the shutter button. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is just experimenting with some different shutter speeds just to see uh, what produces the best light trails. So at the minute I've got it set to f11, 4 second exposure and ISO, one, ooh, ISO 100. So let's uh, take off a few test shots and see how they come out. Another thing I forgot to mention actually, put your camera into continuous shooting mode, fire off a few shots one after the other this way, when we get to the editing stage, we can cherry pick the ones with the best and the longest trails. So I've been taking a variety of exposures between 4 seconds and 10 seconds, and I've also done an exposure at 30 seconds. The idea being, I can cherry pick the uh, best light trails from each of the exposures and then blend them together in Photoshop. So I think I'm about done here actually with all these photos. So I think, let's head on back home and take a little look at these in Lightroom and then I will show you how we can edit together our images for light trails. Ah, man, I should have taken a light trail of the uh, little Starship robots that we have around here. That would have been pretty awesome. So here we are in Lightroom. Um, I've selected out a few of the images that I'm going to edit with you and show you how we can blend these together in Photoshop just to fill out the frame with light, light trails. So here we go. 
the different exposures I've chosen. They're all taken at ISO 100, 24 mil, F11 and four seconds, apart from this one, which I've taken, um, it's 24 mil still, but it's F22 because I wanted to get the lovely starbursts in on the street lights. And this exposure was ended up being at 30 seconds long. So, and although we've got some uh, lots of light trails in here, I'm only going to be using the uh, top part of this image as, for the exposure. So, first things first, let's select all of the images. So push shift and click to select them all. And I'm going to turn syncing on because I want them all to have the same effects applied to them. So I'm going to leave the white balance as it is and the temperature as it is. I'm quite happy with those. I set those when I was out street side taking the photos. But I do feel these could have been exposed a little bit more than they have been. So I'm going to bump that up by about one. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast, but not a lot. Um, then I'm going to just drop my highlights a touch. I'm going to draw out detail from the shadows. Bring down the whites a little bit. And the blacks, again, I'm going to pull up them blacks. There we go, quite a lot. So now we've, we've recovered quite a lot of detail here in the grass. Uh, just to get a little bit more detail in the road, I'm going to add a little bit of texture and clarity and a little bit of dehaze as well. They will just help to bring out the detail on the road. Now, there's not a lot of detail in the sky, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tweak my curve, just pull up and clip the blacks slightly. There we go. Now we, we've recovered quite a lot of detail from that background. And created some separation between the sky and the trees. Just a tiny little bit more. There we go. Now uh, we come down to the HSL so we can uh, tweak the colours of the uh, light trails if we want to. So I'm going to just tweak the reds slightly. I'm going to increase the saturation on the reds and a little bit of luminance. I'm going to pull the oranges more towards the red end of the spectrum. And then I'm going to go down to the greens. I just want to adjust my greens slightly to make them slightly less garish. Maybe just drop, drop the saturation down on those slightly as well. And just increase the luminance just to, again, draw out a as much of the detail as I can. We could just tweak the light trail colour slightly, so adjust the blue hues. Again, boost up that saturation just to make it nice and vibrant on the light trails. And I don't think we need to do a lot with the luminance on there. Let's put that back to zero. We could adjust the image further with the um, colour grading. So. I am going to pull my shadows into the blue slightly. Not a lot though. And my highlights, I'm going to bring round to oranges. But again, just a tiny, tiny little touch. Uh, no need for. Um, to adjust the noise reduction here because these were taken at ISO 100 and although I've boosted them there's still not a lot of noise in there I'm quite happy. I'm not going to enable the uh, profile corrections. So let's take a look at all of these now. So there's my first image, second image, Third image, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and then my final exposure, um, which was slightly more exposed in the first place. So I'm actually going to adjust this one separately. Oops, let's click back onto that image. Uh, 
and I'm going to remove the additional exposure we put on there. There we go, that's better. But again, we're only going to be using this image for the top part here. So what I'm going to do next is open these up in Photoshop. So again, I'm going to select all of the images. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. OK, so here we go. Uh, I've got all my layers open in Photoshop, as you can see. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn these off for a second. I want to move this layer to the top. Turn these ones back on. Then I'm going to select all of the layers apart from the base layer and change the blending mode to lighten. And as you can see, all the light trails beneath the mate, this image blend together because it takes the lightest parts of the image and pulls them into the in together. But what I want to do is now apply a mask to the top layer because I feel like it, it overcomplicates this image slightly and I'm just going to use a brush to soften out this deep. I want to change this detail down here so there we go and I'm also going to adjust my opacity on the brush to 50% and then I'm going to brush out these top light trails a touch just to make them less less dominant in the image Oops, I, shouldn't, I didn't mean to brush out my light uh, sunburst there and again let's Oops, I'm doing that. And again, using the black brush, I'm just going to take out some of these light trails from, from here. So there we go. So I'm just saving the image now, and then I'm going to open this back up in Lightroom as soon as it's done. So there we go, it's all saved. Let's close that down. Bring the Lightroom back up. So there we go, there's our image. I'm just going to give this a star rating just so I know this is my final edit. And I'm just going to give it a few final last tweaks. So I feel like I need to increase the contrast a little bit on this image now. Now we've got all the layers blended together. And again, I'm just going to drop those highlights ever so slightly. Again, just drop those whites ever so slightly, but the rest I'm going to leave as they are. I'm going to leave this panel because we've already made those adjustments. And then I'm just going to bring in a little bit of a vignette just to add a bit more focus into the center, central part of the image and uh, darken out part of this image here, which isn't um, particularly pleasing to the eye. And then finally, just to darken down this foreground a touch, I'm going to add a, add a gradient mask. There we go, just going to drop my exposure slightly, so yep, minus 0.5. Reset the contrast because we don't necessarily want to change that. In fact, I'm going to drop that a little bit more. And there we go. There's our final edited light trail image. Uh, I'm going to pop the high res version up on screen now for you. So I just want to say thanks so much for watching all the way through my video and I hope you enjoyed this little introduction to light trails and nighttime photography and the editing that goes along with it. Um, it was a bit of a challenge making this video actually because uh, I had a bit of a hard drive failure and I did lose some of the work and a lot of my video editing actually that I've done over the last few months. 
my own fault. The backing up hadn't been happening properly and I hadn't realized. So what can you do? Bit gutted, I've lost a few months of photos, but uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes. But anyway, thanks so much for your support. It really means a lot to me that you've uh, watched this video. So if you've liked and subscribed already, thank you very much. If you haven't liked and subscribed and you've enjoyed what you've seen, then please do. The like and the subscribe button are just down there and it really would mean a lot to me if you clicked them. But anyway, that's it from me for now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and goodbye.